I saw this design on Dangar Marine. He did a special on exhaust and it keeps the exhaust pipe separated from the hull so that it won't deform the metal with the heat. The exhaust manifold runs at up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. After the muffler it could be 2 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Cut number one, we'll see if that works. I have the cutlass bearing installed. It's got space in the back for water to come through it. The way it goes is the cutlass bearing goes into this tubing and then that whole piece goes into there. That's just what it take to that's just what it took to make it fit very tightly. And then I coat everything with cold tar epoxy so when it's jammed in there it has a little bit of a glue and of course the protection it needs to avoid rusting. So I'm just using some soapy water on the propeller shaft and it's sliding through nicely. This is how far in it needs to go so this line will line up at the edge of the coupler in order for this to fit into the divot. It helps a lot to move the key in separately and then the shaft goes in a lot easier. And there's where the propeller will sit. It'll have to turn this way, which is left hand, which is how that engine operates. Zero play. I can move the shaft with my hand. I had this styrofoam box that has been laying around that just happened to be the perfect thing to submerge the cutlass bearing in. It's already got water filled up there. I'm going to start up the engine and start spinning. So here's the sound of the motor. And then here's the sound of the exhaust. I think that once I get this engine compartment sealed off, it should be a pretty quiet running boat. The water gauge is working, so that's good. Got the engine up to 150. It's been running for half an hour. Cutlass bearing looks fine. No play in the shaft. It's times like these when you really appreciate diesel. bought these controls just because the cables were the exact length that I needed. I wanted 15 foot cables and it was $50 for the whole thing. What I lucked out on was that these attachment points are exactly where they need to be to get the right travel I need to operate the throttle and the transmission. The threads fit inside of the nut. This is a Volvo nut. Same thing with this for the transmission. So either Morse and Volvo made a deal or maybe Volvo owns Morse or maybe they just standardized these cables. Whatever the case, this was by far the easiest job I've done so far on the boat. Right now, this is the neutral position and here's neutral on the gears. And then when you go into reverse, it will change the gears without altering the throttle for just a little bit. And then same thing with forward. Once you pass through neutral, 
and then push it forward, it'll go into forward gear without changing the throttle. The problem is it only pulls the throttle this way. It won't push it this way unless I put the neutral setting to somewhere around here, which I don't want to do because then when I pass from, let's say, reverse to forward, it will briefly go past the point where it wants to shut the engine down. And if I leave it there long enough, it will shut the engine down. So I'd like to separate the function of these cables. This is what operates the throttle. The problem is that when it's all together, this gear here engages this gear. Just going to put this on there and then attach that with a bolt and that washer on top. I'll show you the final product. Here's the throttle, so that activates separately. You can see the gear linkage is no longer moving with the throttle. And then if I want to shut down the engine, I just pull back and then that will move the throttle backwards to shut it down. And then gearing is straightforward. Forward if you want to go forward, neutral's in the middle, backward if you want to go backward. That's it. slides right into its position here. I've seen sets of control levers that are just levers. There's one on each side and they aren't interconnected the way this one used to be. But the lowest price I found was $300. That was just for the levers, no cables. So I went with this and it worked out 50 bucks. I thought I would show you some of the places you can find free scrap metal. Here's a dirt road. There's the little turnout for it. There's some scrap metal over there. Here's where I already took a bunch of scrap metal from. I'll show you what I got. I left this flat bar here because I don't have any use for it yet, but I think I will in the future. Here are some pieces that I got from the spot I just showed you. Pieces like the ones I just showed you can be used to mount the battery and a lot of other stuff, like mounting the fuel tank. I saved this big bucket of wheels for many years. Just if I see a wheel, I save it. And I had two of these, and this is what it turned out to look like after I grind a groove in it. That's just a regular grinding wheel. This will be the sheave at the top of the mast that the halyard will go through or the rope that will haul up the sail onto the top of the mast. Here in my collection of various bolts and other parts I found a couple of pieces that will be good for the sheave. It just happens to fit right in, rotates, rotates real nice and I think I'll just grind off this piece so that I can make it go all the way through. Just by chance, I even found nuts that fit these threads exactly. No grease or washers in there yet. Seems to work fine. I'm not going to be bolting this on, it's just going to be resting on there due to gravity. So that's why I want that's why I built it this way. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a great 4th of July. We'll see you at the beginning of next month where I hope to show you the mast installed.